Okay, so we're gonna go into the next layer. Everything's very dry right now. So you can see I'm just trying to build up um, all the different layers until we get something similar to what is the John Singer Master Copy. So looking at this, I can start um, with the door. Actually, yeah, I'm going to start with the roof and then I'll move to the door. So the, the roof is pretty straightforward. I would use your round ultramarine blue. If you have cerulean blue, I would do like a cerulean ultramarine blue combination. And maybe a touch of like some kind of purple. Then I would just look at the shape of the roof and the shape of the shadows. And I'm using a dry brush or a dry surface, wet brush. purple color into the next layer or the next pass and I see a shape at the top again I'm just looking at my master uh, my printout if you're looking at a screen do the same thing as well. This part I see is more of a blue. And then as it comes up, it's gonna fade it in. So this would be basically like if you had a roof and all the shadows reflecting down. And while I'm here, and this is dry, I can do the same thing on the other side. Just use a little bit more blue. This time I'll pick up a little bit more purple. And a tiny bit of burnt umber. Yep, that's the color. So I'm just going to line the edge a little bit. If you feel uncomfortable doing a line, use the tape. Okay, so I lined it. I'm going to wipe some of the excess of water off of my paper towel and then I'm going to go back with a more transparent washing. I'll take a little bit of my, my golden yellow. Good edge. So he did have some mixing. So it's, I'm doing the mixing, but I'm doing it in a way that I just continue to, um, to see how it'll work without it going overboard. So I'm not having this big mixing happening. I'm doing it in really subtle shifts. I'm going to just drag this down. 
I'll just do like a little bit of golden yellow. I think I need to pull my roof over a bit more. I'll wipe my brush off and I'll push this back. So the roof line feels done. Um, I'm going to go to the door. I'll move on to the bushes. And then last will be this wash down here and then the trees will be very, very last. So with the door, we'll start with the doorway. I'll switch brushes to a smaller brush. And I'm going to get the inside of the door color I'm going to take my burnt umber and then a little bit of blue and a little bit of gold. You'll see that a lot of these colors that he has are actually just like he had a mix on his color palette and he probably just left it. Probably was like a dirty palette. Instead, he probably just was like, oh, this works. So you'll find that if you leave some of the colors on your palette, you'll be mixing a lot of the same colors. I'm just trying to get that door frame. I'm using a small brush that's not super wet so that I have my control again. Too dark, but I can move it. So if you get a dark area like I just did, just move the bead over. There's like a bead of color. And I'm going to line the edge of this door before I paint it, just so I feel like I know where it is. Okay. So I'm going to just do, actually, I'm going to do the doorway next. And I can do the other two little edges as I go. So I like this color that I have. I have ultramarine blue, burnt umber. It's really working. So I'm going to use that at the top. Because I want it to have a soft edge at the top. So I'm going to take advantage of that that's wet. I'm going to wash my brush right now and wipe off the excess and then I will take some ultramarine blue you have cerulean you could add it into and I'm going to hit this bigger area Now I've got this color that's sort of in between the two. I'm just disturbing it in a way that's uneven so it shows the marks. This is really all about mark making. Taking more of that burnt umber blue color, bringing it down. And do a little more blue. So whatever I see, it's like getting darker. I'll probably switch to a smaller brush. Take a little bit of that. Take a little blue. To give it that texture. And then I see that there's a golden yellow right at the corner. Okay, 
Okay, so now I have like a door. I can take some of those colors that I have, the gray. I'm gonna take a little bit of water on my brush. And I'll apply these like little lines. Places where the, the door and the wall kind of bleed out a little bit. Maybe a little dry brush at the end for texture as well. And I can take my golden yellow, my blue number, and get the edge of that door. I'll do some dry brushing here. And I think that when I'm looking at this, I can see that this value right here could go a little bit darker. Just put some gray in there, a little burnt umber. To push that back. That way, if you can see when I just did that, it, it really added a, um, it made the doorway feel like a doorway. Sometimes you need to add a little contrast to get, to get the feeling of form. So I feel like this side's good. Um, I have this corner to work on, this little window. I think this window is pretty easy. I have a golden yellow, that yellow and purple mix or yellow ochre. So like the windows basically golden yellow right here. And then it has a bit of cad yellow. I'm just using a small brush. And I don't want to put the contrasting area in yet because it'll um it'll bleed too much. And then I'll just have a messy area. I can do the bushes with this next pass. So like right here, make sure you see what I'm seeing. Okay, right here, there's some bushes and there's a little path. So let me first do a little red, orange, brown. So like your red and your burnt umber, make it like a burnt orange or your burnt sienna. So I'm gonna do this little path right here. And just make bring that down. Taking my ultramarine right here. And then a purple, whatever purple you may have, whether it's you're making a purple with a rose. And then I'll take my burnt, I'll take the burnt umber with the purple and blue. And I think I need a little bit more red of some kind or purple in there. Yeah. So something like that. If you have the ultramarine blue and the cad red, you could probably make kind of this dirty purple that's right here. That's almost black, but not quite and then just dry brush or use a brush that's not super saturated. In here. Uh, looks like there's some blue roughed into it. And this area right here is just 
taking the the blue gray kind of combination making that slight bit of gray and then we can address the trees behind so on the right side there's a landscape um, it's a little hard to see but you can see that there's a kind of an oceanic scene So I'm going to take my ultramarine blue again. If you have cerulean, you can use cerulean. And I'm going to define this a little bit. I'm going to make this a little darker, just as we did with our atmospheric perspective um, painting. This has atmospheric perspective, so the area that is closest to the viewer is going to be darker and brighter, where the area that is further away is going to be lighter and disappear off into space. Okay, and now we'll make some green. So just ultramarine blue. Wash my brush off in between. Yellow. And look at that, I've got this color right here and make that dark green by just adding that purple color into my green. I'm just going in and kind of doing these random dots that he has here. some lighter green just like an island over here you can you can get more intricate in a space this is just to show you like the the color scheme like I could see some yellow in it But really, is, this is like a place to get you started on your own. So this is the right side. Um, I think the only thing that we need is like some very, very light shift in clouds, which is blue with a slight purple. And then you can take your water, kind of form these clouds a bit more than what you have. You don't need us to do much back here. It's just a suggestion of like a cloud. Okay. So the next video will be the foreground and background and a few details.